Okay, question six. A square matrix is called nilpotent if there's a natural number n such that a to the n is a zero matrix. So a matrix A is nilpotent if there's some n such that a to the n equals zero is the zero matrix. Is the following statement true or false? If a matrix is nilpotent, then one of its eigenvalues is equal to zero. Okay, let's try, let's try and prove that. Um, Try and, try and prove one of the eigenvalues of a n is zero. So what we can do is this a n. We can fact that's actually like a times a to the n plus one, right? Mm -hmm. So now if you do, if you hit both sides of this thing with x, the vector x, where vector x is, x could be anything, x is any odd vector, let's say it's any non-zero vector, then you're going to, on the right hand side, you'll get the zero matrix times x, which is zero. So now it means that this is an eigenvector with eigenvalue zero. No, it doesn't. That would need. Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's it's zero. Uh, so that's the same as that's the same as zero times a to the n plus one x. Yes. So, in other words, the eigenvector is a to the n plus one x. Okay. Because then a v equals a to the n x which equals zero. Okay, so, oh, which equals zero x, which equals zero. So, which equals zero v. So, that x could be anything. Hmm. The only thing is, we don't want that v to be the zero vector. We don't want that v to be the zero vector. Because if that v was a zero vector, then we'd be saying that oh, you can't have zero eigenvector. You can have zero eigenvector, you can't have zero eigenvector. So we don't want the v to be the zero vector. So we want to choose that x with an plus one. It's not, oh, it's not an plus one, it's an minus one, of course. Minus one. Minus one. Minus one. Okay. So basically, I guess we, we want n to be the smallest natural number such that a n is a zero matrix. Can that be done? Is that okay? So that the one below does not, doesn't give you the zero matrix. Doesn't give you zero matrix. Then there is an x such that a n minus one times x is not the zero vector. Um... So if there's a natural number such as a n, then there's a smallest natural number, and natural numbers, if there's a smallest natural number, um, I'm just wondering about what if that natural number is, technical issue, what if that natural number was zero? So in other words, what if a to the zero is a zero matrix? Now that makes no sense because a to the zero, for a to the zero to be the zero matrix, a would have to be zero, and then a does have an eigenvalue, which is, uh, yeah, I guess a is eigenvalue is zero. What if n is one? So a a is a zero matrix. Again, the same issue. So basically, if n n equals two is the beginning of the cases that are not technical and irritating. Okay. So this this is gonna be the proof then. So um, so we're gonna say. Let's n be least not least. Let n be the smallest natural number such that a to the n equals the zero matrix. Then there's a vector x. What is the vector space in this case? 
it doesn't even say it's just a square matrix so I just say there's a vector x such that oh, well the first point is that then a and to the minus 1 is not 0 so there's x such that a and to the minus 1 mm, this is not going to be the eigenvector so I'm just going to name it so there's x such that v equal to a and minus 1 x Uh, vector to vector is not equal to the zero matrix. Okay, now a v equals a times a n minus one v, which equals a a n minus one v, which equals a n v, which equals zero. V, which equals zero, which equals zero, zero, a n minus one. What? So a one must be it's a n minus one x, isn't it? X, 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 x. Zero, which is zero, v. Okay. So v is eigen vector with eigen value zero. The question now is, what if I just want to? This all this all works for n equal definitely works for n equals two. It works for n equals two because then n minus one is one. That makes sense. So let's. So this is going to say, let n be something bigger than two. The small n bigger than two be the smallest natural numbers with a n equals zero. Um, the question now is, do we need to deal with the case where n equals one, n equals zero, if n equals one? Then a to the one, which equals a, equals zero. So zero x equals zero x for any vector x. And case where n equals zero, if n equals zero, then a to the zero equals what is a to the zero? I mean, a to the zero equals zero. That implies, yeah, that implies a equals zero. I mean, I think by analogy with, with numbers, if you have x to the zero, if a, if a number x to the zero, if that equals zero, then we have that zero. Normally that's one, unless the x is zero. So yeah, I reckon that's probably true. Uh, and certainly you do as well. So now the only thing is, oh, that's it. No, that's a proof. The, oh, I would say that this stuff about n being greater than equal to two is technical stuff that would not technical stuff that is unnecessary, and you get full marks without it. I would say.